Now in this video, we're gonna be covering again the subject of exporting to PDF from Power Apps. Now, full disclosure, a not, a not a huge amount has changed in uh, how you export to PDF from Power Apps from my previous video. So there's really not, technically there's not a lot of difference between the two. But I was sort of thinking about how I explained that in the first video. Now it is, going, we are going back a few years ago. So I think I can explain the subject way quicker and sort of condense it down even further. And, you know, in the first video as well, we, we, like we sort of messed around with creating HTML in, in Power Apps and then sending that HTML over to, to Power Automate. And I think we can also simplify that a little bit. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end to find out how to do that. As you can see on the screen, I've got my issues list Power Apps application and I've been using this to demo different features and, and I've been using this for a demo for my last few videos and I'm gonna use it today. If you um, are unfamiliar with how this works, it's just a really simple Power App that logs issues to a SharePoint list. If I flick over to SharePoint here, you can see this is the SharePoint list that the Power App is saving data to. And we can see we've got a few issues logged in here with ID 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. If we go over to Power Apps, we can see that's being reflected here in our Power App gallery. Now, in like I said, in this video, we're gonna be exporting, I'm gonna show you how to export to PDF. And we're just gonna get it so it exports a record to PDF once we've saved it. Uh, in Power Apps. So we'll save a record and it'll export that immediately, whatever we've saved to PDF. And I'll also include an image in that PDF as well. So if you have been messing around with this, you know that that's probably the hardest part of what you have to do or how to get this working is to get that image to display properly. Everything else is a piece of cake. So first thing we're going to start with is flow and we're really going to do most of this or nearly all of this in in power automate so let's create a new flow and we're just going to create a cloud-based flow we'll just skip this part we don't really need to do that yet this is going to be triggered by sharepoint and it's going i'm going to trigger this when an item is created in that list i'm going to select the, our demo site and the list is going to be the issues list. So that is the list that the Power App is saving to. So the first thing we want to do is compose our HTML. So we need to use the compose function or action in Power Automate. And in our inputs, this is where I'm going to compose my HTML that is going to make up the content of our PDF. Now, our export to PDF requires HTML. So there's a couple of steps here we have to follow to get our content to display correctly in that PDF file that we'll ultimately end up with. So for the title, now I'm just gonna keep this content really simple. I'm gonna take the content, I'm gonna take the title from our, when our item is created. So this is our record that we're saving from Power Apps. So I'm gonna take the title value from that and insert it as a H1 tag. And then I'm just gonna use a paragraph tag. So you, you will have to dust off some of your basic HTML skills here to, um, to compose this part of your PDF. So in my paragraph tag, I'm going to take the description value from our, our list item. Okay, so that is all I'm gonna need for the moment for our compose. In the next step, I need to create a HTML file. We can create this file in SharePoint, but I'm gonna do this in, I'm gonna keep this in OneDrive at the moment. And I'm gonna do that because the function to convert to PDF is also in OneDrive. So I'm just gonna keep those files in OneDrive because they're temporary files. And ultimately in the end, we'll save those files to SharePoint as you'll see in the next couple of steps. 
So for the folder option, I'm just going to create that in the root of my um, OneDrive. And for the file name, I will, I'm going to use a function. So under here, I'm going to use this concat function, go back to dynamic content. And in here, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the title again. as the first part of the string and the second part of the string, open single quotes, quotes, close single quotes, and I just need to put a .html extension at the end of it. So what that's gonna do, that function is, it's going to create a file name, uh, it's gonna, sorry, it's gonna create a file in my OneDrive that is the title of the file or the name of the file is going to be the title that I've called my, well, I've saved my record for my power app. It's going to take that and just concat a .html at the end to um, ensure that file is recognized as the HTML file. And in the contents, I'm just going to take the output from our compose step. Okay, so in the next option, I need to use, I will need to convert that file to, to a PDF file. So we want a OneDrive. We're looking for a OneDrive function again. And we want to use this convert file. And in here, the file I'm just going to take from our create, and I just need to use the ID with it's the unique identifier for the file. And that's all I have to give for the, the actual file part of this step. And then we're converting to PDF. All I need to do now is I need to save to SharePoint and pick a place where I'm going to save that. We want the create file step. And I'm going to create that inside of same document, sorry, the same SharePoint site as where the issues list is sitting. And in the folder, I want to create that in my issues attachments library. So it's the same library we used in my previous video when we were saving attachments. So I'm going to save this PDF to the same document library. Now in the file name, all we want is the file name from the convert file action. And the file contents will be the file contents from the convert file action. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to update those file properties. So we need another SharePoint action. And we just need to find the update file properties action. Here we want to point this to the SharePoint site and the library name is issue attachments. And this will be under the create file two. So this is where this action create file two is the action that I use to save to SharePoint. So I want this item ID as the identifier for that file. And I just want to change the parent ID because I want to associate this PDF with my original um, record that I saved from SharePoint. And this is the ID of the record that I saved from the Power App to our SharePoint list, because I want to associate this PDF to my record. So I know that this is an export from that original record or that original issue that I saved from our Power App. And all I need to go here is that I need to find this when the item is created. So this is our power app record that was saved. And I just want to save that ID in that field. Let's save that actually. Let's give this name. So let's call this flow export to PDF. And let's save that. Perfect. Now if we go back to our power app. We run that and I click on a new record. I'm going to call this a uh, YouTube demo export to PDF. 
and in the description today. And let's save that. So now we have a new record here that we've saved. If we go to our list here, we can see in the SharePoint list, a new record has been saved. The description is whatever I typed in the description field and the title is that. Because our flow is being triggered from when an item is created, our flow is now running to create that export. You can see that's now running and it has succeeded. Click refresh, we can see we've got a PDF now of our record. If we click on it, we have the contents that we created, exported as a PDF. Now, the one last thing that I want to show you is how to actually add an image to that file as well. And this is the trickiest part that we're going to cover today. Now, let's take a look at where I put my image. So in here, I've just got a document library in SharePoint and I've saved a image in the document library called Logo Small. Now this is just my channel logo, but this could be sourced from, this image could be sourced from pretty much anywhere. So like I said, here is my image here. It's just sitting in SharePoint under a document library. It's called logo underscore small dot PNG. If we go back to flow, we'll edit that. We need a new step right at the beginning here. And the new step is going to be a SharePoint step. And we have to get file contents. And like I said, I know the file is in the shared documents library and it is logo small. So that gets our content, but here's the tricky bit. All right, everyone paying attention? <laughs> Let's go, right. We have to start with some HTML and this is just gonna be an image tag. And the easiest way to do this is to Just type everything static that I'm going to need first. So what I've got here is an image tag space SRC for source equals open quotes, double quotes, and then data and then colon, semicolon. So we've got a colon and then semicolon and then base 64 and then comma. And then we'll close the double quotes, space style equals, open uh, double quotes again. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of style as well. And I will uh, close that and, oh, and then close the tag. Okay, so let's move our cursor over to just after the um, colon, after data colon. And in here, I'm, I need to insert an expression. So the first expression I need is this. So this is everything that I just covered. Get file contents, body, but we want content type. So this is bracket, square bracket, single quote, dollar content dash type. So we're getting, we need to put the content type that we're actually passing to the image tag. So this is where we define if it's, a, it'll already be defined in this content that we're pulling from the file. So if it's a PNG, it'll be a PNG content type. If it's a JPEG, it'll be a JPEG. But this is already embedded in the body of what we're, what we're getting from our get file contents action. 
So here we're just specifying we just want to get that value from this particular step. Now here, the next bit we want to do is we need to go to the point where we've got base 64 comma, just be after the comma and before the double quotes, we insert our cursor again. Then we go over to expression and we just need to grab, we need to just type in this particular function here that will get our contents now from our get file contents action. So very similar to the previous function, we just got outputs, open bracket, open single quote, get file content, which is this action. And then um, question mark, single quote body, close single quote, then close square bracket, then open square bracket, single quote, dollar content, single quote, close square bracket. And if we click save, we go, back to our power app, we create a new, another demo, this Okay, so we've got record 16 now that we've just created uh, another record using our Power App, which will create a record inside of our issues list. And we've got 16 here, which will also trigger our flow. So that's our flow completed successfully now. Let's go take a look at the issues attachments and we can see another demo has been created. If we click on that, we have now inserted an image into our PDF. And if we go into Power Apps here and we bring up issue 16, we take a look. We, because we've linked and we updated the, that file with our parent, P, um, our parent ID, we can now see it automatically as an attached file inside of our new issue that we created. And if we click on it here, it just opens straight up in the browser. And we can see we've got a really nice PDF created from our issue and from our SharePoint list. And from here, we can just save the file or do whatever you like with it. So hopefully overall, that's a simpler approach for you to apply for when you want to export to PDF from your Power App.